Can I have your attention, gentle people? You are now tuned in to an episode of Philanthropy. So sit back and do not relax, because we have a lot of oppressive history to review. My name is Jackie, and my co-hosts today are... Aaron. And... Rachel. They will be joining me as we break down and expose the corruption of the film industry. This is precisely due to the main mistreatment of Black individuals as a consequence of the Eurocentric and male-dominated system that has been suppressing minorities for numerous decades. To begin, I first wanted to ask Rachel and Aaron about how much knowledge they already have on this subject and whether it was something discussed in their schooling or just simply breezed over. Unfortunately, for me growing up, it was a conversation that was not discussed as thoroughly and in depth as it probably should have. So I will admit I'm a pretty naive individual and as for what I'm trying to learn. Okay, and what about you, Aaron? Yeah, I mean, this has definitely been glossed over for me in the past. I don't think I've ever actually like sat down and dug deep into corruption in the film industry. But I do know there's a lot that goes on in the music industry in terms of corruption. Uh, but I wouldn't be surprised if this level of corruption happens in Hollywood as well. All right. Um, going off of those answers, I think it's good that we are doing this podcast episode today. So let's get into a little bit of history. The earliest records of white Hollywood and African Americans being involved in the film as industry date back to the 1920s. The only roles given to black people were the positions of extras. And in this position, they experienced racial othering and unfair labor demands such as little pay and unsafe working conditions. Due to black actors only being extras, Hollywood decided a solution to this would be employing white people to perform in blackface. And for those who do not know, blackface is a form of makeup where one's face and body are painted black as a way to represent a caricature of a black person. And this was utilized mainly by white people. Films that feature this distasteful practice are His Darker Self from 1924 and The Jazz Singer from 1927. Eventually, Hollywood did put away with the hiring of white actors to appear in blackface, but not before creating ruinous stereotypes and a lingering disrespect from the inaccurate portrayal of black individuals. When African Americans were finally shown on screen, they were only given marginalized roles. It must be acknowledged that the parts black actors were given reflected the structure of society and the external social forces that define the roles black individuals were hired into. Therefore, actors were forced to perform as slaves, maids, or cooks, solidifying anti-black stereotypes and the white heteronormative narrative. These limited and unjust representations promoted racial exclusion. If we flash forward to film culture today, we can see that beginning in the 2000s, there was finally a breakthrough from these negative movie narratives. In 2013, there was real progress with the release of honorable black films such as 42, which is actually one of my favorite movies and features Chadwick Boseman as Jackie Robinson. Other movies from that year are Fruitvale, The Butler, 12 Years a Slave, and Mandela, Long Walk to Freedom. All of these films depicted outstanding and influential black male characters. The diversification of male roles was powerful and informed audiences about important African-American topics since the average U.S. classroom seems to fail to do so, as we heard from my co-hosts. With this being said, black women had an intractable time finding the spotlight and being cast in films that encompassed ideas larger than their stereotypes of maids and nannies. Eventually, there was an introduction to high-profile roles like Halle Berry's Storm and Javicia Leslie's Batwoman. Marvel's Black Panther also featured numerous roles for powerful black women and ended up making a billion dollars in 2018. Hearing of the success of black female actresses is inspiring, although we have to be sure to avoid getting ahead of ourselves in terms of thinking that this battle for film justice is finalized. It has taken 80 years to give black individuals a chance to appear on screen and to do so in a position of power without oppressive undertones. There's still blatant racism and misogyny that roams within Hollywood, despite all the progress that has been made. So, that was a lot. Rachel and Aaron, what are your thoughts on all this, considering the heaviness of the topic? Honestly, there's a lot to be said about this topic, and it's really crazy to see how far things have come. But also, you are correct. There seems like there's a lot more room for improvement and a long ways to go. 
it's actually insane to see how people used to do blackface because that almost shows just how constructed the idea of race is. Like, it's just a social construct. Right, yeah. Sorry. <laughs> I, no, no, it's good. It's good. Uh, yeah, like, the idea of someone playing blackface now and just, like, just imagine you're on set and the director tells someone to, hey, go get this makeup, go get this paint, put it on yourself and come right back, come right back up. And then we're going to film you being dehumanized and we're going to film you being a slave and being loyal or subservient to, like, a master. Like, how crazy does that sound now? Yeah, it wouldn't be tolerated. Like, that's is, crazy, right? Yeah. Unless you're playing, like, a historical... Um, act like if it's if you're at, if you're trying to show what happened in the past that's that's one thing but like they were doing it for like comedy back then which is wild yeah and all right we'll stray away from that and let's try to remain on a positive note and focus on how black women are not only starring in films but also creating masterpieces most recently ava duvernay created naomi which is a sci-fi show created by black women and it was released just last year, the storyline is about a black teen with superpowers played by Casey Walfall and depicts an interracial family. DuVernay also adapted A Wrinkle in Time, which centers around a biracial girl as the protagonist who adventures into an alternate universe. She's confronted by evil beings, and one is played by Oprah Winfrey. Another actress who has changed the narrative is Wanda Skies. Miss Skye is a black actress and comedian who has taken over the industry as she stars in shows such as The Upshaws, Blackish, and Vampirina. She is not only representing the black community, but also shedding light on the queer community as she is open and expressive with her sexuality and happily married to a woman. From this episode, I think every listener should take away that Hollywood is a corrupt industry that created many of stereotypes and caused immense damage to the Black community. Although this history is not often taught in schools, it does not mean that it did not happen or the trauma of the past is healed. Through resilience and years of refusing to be content with being deemed inferior, Black individuals fought for their way to the spotlight. With Black women, men, and children starring in shows and movies more frequently, it allows for the representation of minorities that were not present until this century. The future of film is here, and it is not just white. Thank you for tuning in to Filmanthropy, Take 5.